you are actually not aware that something has transpired and you have been sentenced. You know, this reminded me of something, that I'm under the sentence of the enemy, the wicked one. And that made me to wake up and I realized that, no, something is fishy. I have to get back up and fix my life through Christ. What can I do? Hello, everyone. It's Ishmael N., your priest, and I welcome you to today's video. Yes, you know, let me show you something. There are a lot of things that will sneak up on you and they will stick in your life. Not that they have to, but because they are taking advantage. Because you are not aware that you have been sentenced. And most importantly, you are not aware that something has actually transpired. You see, at the end of the day, if you look at Esau, in the physical, it seemed innocent when he sold his birthright, right? He said he sold his birthright to who? The younger brother, Jacob. And he thought that, come on, yeah, okay, you are the elder brother, verbally, and that's it. Yeah, you are the elder brother. Now, can you give me something to eat? And he thought it ended with him selling his soul physically, and that's it. Now, nah, actually, he sold his soul. Haven't you heard when they say someone sold their soul to the devil? So he sold his birth right in that manner. And no wonder why his things could no longer be the same because it is no longer registered in the realm. The Bible says what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. You lose on earth, it will be loosened in heaven. Let me tell you that there's something that has happened in your life. You wake up one day, things begin to fall apart. There is always a cause and there is always a solution to whatever you're going through. This reminds me when I was at church, when man of God said something and that I looked at it, I'm like, this is actually real. He was like, he, in heaven, there is no healing. Meaning when we go to heaven, we can never ever pray for healing because there you do not get sick. Note that down, okay? So now, if really there is no praying for healing in heaven, it means the only play place we should pray and ask for healing is while we're still here on earth. Meaning, this should be clear before you. Never allow yourself to be bound by a sickness. You have the right to pray and you get healed. If you want to exercise that power of the Lord Jesus Christ for healing, do it while here on earth because once you are there in heaven, it is a given. It is by default. You don't even have to think about that. So if you want to experience, exercise, enjoy the benefits in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, do it while here on earth. Sometimes this makes me to check and I'm like, I'll be damned if I am to go to heaven, not having fully experienced all the capabilities of the power in the blood, the power of the Lord Jesus. Because listen, we all know you only live once in this earth. Meaning you can be in heaven, but there are things which when we go there, we'll ask the Lord and say, Lord, why could I not perform such a miracle? Why could I not experience healing from this sickness that bothered me for the rest of my life? And listen, what he will say, he will tell you why you were not praying enough. You never believed enough or you were praying for a short time. Meaning whatever we're doing, you will give us that had you done this like this, you would have definitely gotten healed. Had you given your tithe and your offerings, you did not have to be broke. But it's because you were not tithing. You were not offering. You were not helping nobody with your finances. You were eating selfishly alone. So you see, you wonder why the locusts are eating your finances. You'd be like, Lord, but I was struggling financially. No, you were struggling because something was going on. You were sentenced for destruction because there was a locust 
But then what does my word say? If you give your tithe and offerings, I'm gonna cast away all the locusts from eating from you. So you see, just like that, had you given from that small, that little that you had, I would have come through for you. So with this message, I am telling you there are a lot of things that are happening in your life and you are confused and you are wondering, what is the cause? How can I get out of this? Hence, I gave you an example when men of God was talking about there is no healing in heaven because there's no getting sick. That made me to see that there are a lot of things that one must take that belongs to us. Healing is yours. Breakthrough is yours. You just can just decide that no, like the Lord Jesus said, better if your arm causes you to sin, if your eye causes you to sin, remove your eye, remove your hand. Better you enter heaven with one eye or one arm than to, for you to go straight to hell with both arms, right? So it's another way where you must check things like there are some things that once we have them, they become like a stumbling block. Some is wealth. You'd be like, no, I don't want to be rich because it distracts me from the Lord. I don't want to get married because it will distract me from giving my full to the Lord. So there are so many things, and I mean giving my full attention to the Lord. So there are so many things that we rather not have them because they're a hindrance. They're a blockage. They're a distraction. But then what about those things that they then distract us all together? And as a result, it means we must capitalize. And that those things, of course, you'll be like, you know what? I don't want to obsess over this thing. Ah, even if I don't get it, I'm fine. I'm happy in the Lord. Then you leave it as it is. But there are those things that you really want. There are those things that you are really praying for. And the enemy has done something to manipulate. You think that it is happening by accident. No, someone is responsible. The Lord said, go around the walls of Jericho for seven, uh, for seven days. Had they went the first, second, and third, and they gave up, the walls wouldn't have fallen. But because they did it accordingly, the walls fell. Let me tell you, you have the walls of Jericho in your life. And there is a solution. Better God himself tell you like he did with Paul in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12. My grace, my grace is sufficient for you. You get what I mean? Paul could no longer get healed from that thorn in his flesh because God wanted it to be like that. He got to prove it. Now my question there are some situations you can say that, no, this is not normal. There is no way where God wants me to live like this. This is never a will of God, especially on a personal level. Yes, in general level, people will believe that God can make us perfect. We don't lack like nothing, right? But then on a personal level, you can see that for me, God wants this thorn in my flesh. And to some, the enemy deceives us so that we don't pray against it or else we pray it will get off so it is safe to know that this is not my birthright this is not normal this is not the will of god i will get to the bottom of this matter that is why i pray also on your behalf anything that has been done against you may the lord begin to expose and may he begin to guide you on what to do and how to resolve it in Jesus mighty name. Amen. And of course, remember you can book an appointment with me. My details are on the comment section below. See you next time.